the men from Super Service. Facing danger just for kicks. Half a dozen super strong men who were called the Super Six. Super Six! Super Six! Battle criminals and all their evil games. Super Six! Super Six! Evil doers to the man Down the fear of darkness. Giving crime an uppercut. Five great thunderbolts of power. And a bolt who is a nut. Super Six! Super Six! They give their own for Super As we begin another humdrum day at Super Service Headquarters, we find our hero delivering lunch to the Chief Dispatcher. Here's your lunch, Chief. Soup and fortune cookies, just like you ordered. Oh, boy. Seaweed soup. That's my favorite. Ugh. What's the matter with you, you dumb cup? There's no seaweed in this here soup. Uh, I I'm sorry, Chief, but... I, I just couldn't find any seaweed soup. Now, how can I eat fortune cookies without seaweed soup? Well, why don't you see what your fortune is anyway? Hey, it's a ticker tape fortune cookie. It says, too bad, Yankee devil. I have cornered seaweed market in all of Orion. Your fortune is, you will never eat seaweed soup again. Signed, Super Sumo. Why the knife of that guy? I want you to go out there and stop Super Sumo. Right, Chief. Trip, flam, flowy, am Meanwhile, halfway around the world, we find that the seaweed shortage has made the natives restless. What good peanut butter and seaweed sandwich without seaweed? Yeah. And no more filter seaweed cigarettes. What a raw fish hot dog without seaweed sauerkraut, huh? OK, you are there. Uh, give us back seaweed. You have stuffed and mud budgie yama. Uh, we blow cutting and picking head off. I invincible super sumo. I strongest of all super guys. Fire! We go hooking more. Wanna play rough, eh? I super sumo fry down and make sukiyaki pudding out of you. Boy, getting a little too fat to fry here. However, my karate chop still very effective. Asha! Nothing can stop. Super Sumo! Ah! Oh, there's Fatso now. If you don't give back all that seaweed, I I'll have to get tough with you. Ha ha ha! My karate chop never fair. All right, Fatso. Give up or I'll give you a chop with a stick you'll never forget. All the way round, I devil, or I threaten you, right? Equion. Okay, y you asked for it. I show you how to play with our chopsticks. Most are inscrutable. Most have black belt head. Maybe you like ears boxed instead, huh? Ooh -ho -ho. Look like abalone steak. Kid never learn. Not so fast, or, or I'll be forced to use my boiner on you. On guard! Well, now, does that strike a familiar chord? Ooh, boy, did that smart. Ooh, you're really getting my Irish up. Well, why don't you try to catch me, then? Oh, you think a super sumo too fat to jump across, huh? Well, kiddo, watch this. So long, fat soul! Now I 
am convinced I must go on crash diet. Now I'll get that seaweed out of Mount Fujiyama. <coughs> not so fast, kid. I not finish with you yet. Take this. Uh, you miss me. I show you. <coughs> now I'm going to give you my super duper karate chop. <coughs> You missed again! Ha <laughs> I made sprit pea soup on a kid. <laughs> Nobody gonna take away my seaweed. That's what you think, Pat. I, I'm flying up to get that seaweed and there's nothing you can do about it. Trip, flam, sowie, and swoosh! This time, take no chances. I use Oriental fireworks rocket. Well, you never gonna get seaweed now, kid. I too fast for you. Oh, ha 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 ha! Rocket seem to be pooping out. Oh, goody! Starting up again. Oh no! I'm heading straight for Mount Fujiyama Crater! Golly Warwickers, if he hits that volcano, there'll be a big... Kaboom! Well, that looks like the end of Super Sumo and all the seaweed! Oh, hi kid! Did you take care of Super Sumo? Yeah, I, I fixed him real good! A and here's your soup, Chief! I couldn't get seaweed, so... I got shark fin instead. Ouch! All right, take it off, wise guy. Take it off! Okay, elevator man. Let's see if you can hit my super fastball. Strike three. Strike four. How about? What? You hate strike three. Collection, ball four. Foul ball. What? Strike two. Ball three. Ball two. What? Strike one. Ball one. Two base hit. What? Congratulations. You make home run without hitting ball. This is the residence of J.B. Gottrocks, one of the wealthiest men in the country. In spite of all of J.B.'s wealth, the one who really controls the purse strings is his wife, Ladybug. She just had a mink lining put in her sable, had her gallstones removed and replaced them with rhinestones. But every week she gives J.B. something for spending money. Last week she gave him a punch in the eye for spending money. However, money isn't everything in her life. She's also crazy about stocks, bonds, annuities, and her pampered Pekingese cuddles. Jonathan, get out of that chair and let Cuddles sit down. Later that night, Cuddles is dognapped by a kidnapper. The news of the dog napping spreads quickly and the Got Rocks immediately engage the services of the famous criminologist, the Mutz O'Reilly's. The Mutz O'Reilly's, uh, private eyes, at your service. Oh yes, we already hear about dog napping. Don't worry, Mrs. Got Rocks. We'll get on the case right away. This'll be a cinch. We'll start by searching the grounds. Aha! A clue. What is it? It's a flea, and he's trying to tell us something. Confusion say, dogs can have fleas, but fleas cannot have dogs. So we follow flea. Lead on, uh, little flea. This 
must be the abductor's hangout. Shut up, you mutt. What do you want? Hey, you got a dog in there? Yeah. Well, we want it. Okay, here's your dog. And here's some mustard to go with it. Now, beat it. Looks like we'll have to batter the door down. Suggest we use something bigger and better to batter the door down. The things you can get with trading stamps. Anybody got any suggestions? Why don't we try huffing and puffing? <laughs> fishy going on around here? We'll use this pressurized phone booth. Let's check it out first. Okay, White, push the bell. <laughs> Perfect. This invention will give him flat feet. Shh, here he comes. Okay, push the bell. Hello? Okay, hold the phone. This is for you. Oh, thanks. Hello? Pat down, you little flea bag. There, that'll shut you up. Okay, you dirty crook. Where's the dog? I give up. You're too smart for me. Uh, he's in there, in the doghouse. Okay, you. Stand back. We'll check just to make sure. <laughs> what a bunch of stoops. <laughs> Goodbye, Mozzarellas. Goodbye to you, you creep. You're right where you belong, in the can. Here you are, Mrs. Gotrax, your dog. All safe and sound. Oh, my darling, sweet angel. Did you get the culprit who stole my dog? Yeah, he's right there. Well, take the can off his head. I want to see what a man looks like who would steal a dog. Okay, Mrs. Godrax. It's Jonathan, my husband. Who are you? You no good, good for nothing. Come back here. Are you here? If I get my hands on you, come back, you little like Confusion say, she one wife in a million, the wrong one. Now remember, Magneto Man, the loser has to buy ice cream for a week. On your mark, get set, go! Why the ruddy rotter? Hey, trick me. That'll teach you to be on your toes. This'll teach you to be on your toes. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, no! You win by a nose, Superboy. I'll buy a week's worth of ice cream. I'll take it now. I want to soak my toes in it. It was 
5 a.m. when the wheels kissed runway 31 of my home airport. After 48 sleepless hours, I was eager to check in, head for home, and a well-deserved rest. This is Super Service Central. It's headquarters for a group of us superheroes. I'm Elevator Man. Like most guys, my work has its ups and downs. There's a plane leaving for Istanbul in an hour. Be on it. I planned on going to bed. Is it that urgent? It's urgent. <sighs> Just got word. The fly has left the Orient and is headed for Istanbul. The crown jewels of Neftari are on display in the city museum. And that's the kind of sugar the fly likes. Stop him. The fly. He was one of the world's cleverest jewel thieves. I'd waited a long time to get him for an assignment. I hit town that night, rented a car, and headed for the museum. If I was going to be dealt into this game, I wanted to look at the cards. I had my look, and they were a straight in diamonds. No wonder the fly wanted to sit in. They were worth a fortune. The security was pretty good. An armed guard stood outside, in front of each door. But with my training, it took me only seconds to find the weakness in their protection. An unguarded window. An unlocked unguarded window. For the fly, it would be as easy as an uncovered sugar bowl. Now, I knew how the fly would get the jewels. I had to find out when. I had a plan. I had to find out where the fly was hiding out. He lived on candy. So I parked myself where I could watch the largest candy stand in town. I didn't have long to wait. The alert siren somewhere in my brain started screaming the minute she got off the elevator. You get so you can recognize them. There's something about the criminal type, an air that betrays them to someone who knows. And I know. She was stocking up for someone, and it could only be the fly. I kept her in sight as she headed back to the elevator. It figured. The penthouse. The fly like style. The trail was heating up. It was time to start using the talent and training that kept me near the top in the super service. There were several routes to the penthouse, but I like to cut my own trail. I dropped quietly into the lush garden surrounding the penthouse. Every nerve in my body was turned on, listening for danger signals. Plans were being made in that penthouse, and I had to hear them. So I listened, and I looked. I heard and saw plenty. The girl will enter the museum corridors in exactly one hour. You two will stage an attack on her to draw the guards away from the doors to the jewel room. Is that clear? I will enter through the window during the commotion and steal the jewels. I had heard enough. I had it all. I stepped away and bumped into a table. I had to get out of there and fast, so I de-elevated and found myself in a spider's web. I was lucky. The spider had hung up a for sale sign and moved away. And a good thing. It would have been a bad time to elevate. He looked right at me, but never saw me. I was too small. I could have taken him right then, but I had to catch him red-handed with the loot. Check the doors and the elevator. It was probably nothing, but we must be careful. They all went in and, thanks to that spider's web, I had a plan for catching the fly. The Super Service training manual had one hard and fast rule, travel light, and make use of whatever is at hand. I like that rule. It keeps me sharp. I had spotted a pile of rope and a pot of glue in the alley. If I worked fast, it would be all I needed. It's when you're fighting the clock that good training pays off. I used every minute I had and had just finished when I heard the fly coming. I was ready for him. 
His henchmen had already started the trouble outside. I de-elevated and watched the window above me. We must have both heard the guards coming at the same time. Abdul, check the jewels and be sure you lock the door after you. No one here. All clear. He was slick. He used a glass cutter that went through that glass like butter. The fly was at his sugar, stuffing the loot into a bag slung around his neck. When he was finished, he started up for the window. Even with a million and a half worth of jewels around his neck, he was still fast. I was fast. I guess you could say I had the case all wrapped. Because I did. It was the old spider and the fly story, but on a larger scale. We headed for home. And this would be the fly's last flight for a long, long time. Meet the men from Super Service. They're facing danger just for kicks. Half a dozen super strong men who were called the Super Six. Super Six! Super Six! Battle criminals and all their evil games. Super Six! Super Six! Evil doers the mention of their names. Down the fear of darkness, given crime an uppercut. Five great thunderbolts of power, and a bolt who is a nut. Super Six! Super Six! They give their all for Super Six! 